you have successfully reduced 9.3 kilos of fat while gaining 2.7 kg of muscle. Amazing. You made a meal plan for me. I didn't follow it. It's very difficult to do when you're when you're traveling. I get in 30 minutes of exercise, 29 to 30 days per month. It's okay to eat a bit of unhealthy food here and there because you're unable to find them. You reply and I want my wife to look even hotter. So I'm like, you know, it's not going to work because you want her to work out when she doesn't want to work out. Do not force someone to exercise if they don't want. What if I say losing 9 kilo of fat is very doable? Can you lose fat while traveling for work? Today, my guest will be sharing his personal experience with you. Before we begin, I'm in a mission to reduce 1% obesity in Malaysia. You can help me by liking and sharing this video with your friends. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 41. Alright guys, let us welcome my client, Tim. So Tim, thank you for coming over to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Chris, and I have many questions I want to ask you, which the listeners and the viewers want to know. What's your secret in losing body fat? So my first question, yeah? Mm -hmm. Please share with the listener your nature of work and how do you go about your daily life? Okay, so I am the co-founder of an IT consultancy firm. Okay. Uh, and um, as the nature of my business, I obviously uh, run a business, so I have long working hours. Mm -hmm. um, our business also has a lot of international clients. Right. Uh, so pretty frequent uh, travel overseas with different time zones and long flights. Okay, so before we... Before you share the transition of you, your exercise and nutrition, can you describe your previous habit? Previous habit. My previous habit was a lot of eating, right? Uh, okay. Like the, the wrong things because you're tired and you come home and you're like, okay, I don't have uh, energy to, to do this. And um, you just want to like get things over quickly so you can get back to work, right? Okay. So I wasn't really very mindful of uh, my health mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I was like, I need to grow the business. We are like a young business, right? So it's like, just focus on this thing. The other stuff, I'll think about it later. So back then, yeah. your priority was your business. Yes. And I'm certain now your priority is still your business. Yes, it is. Yeah. But the transition, like what, what makes you like, you know what? I need to do something about it. There's multiple reasons. Uh, one is that if I kept going, I would just get more fat every year. And there's a, I, I crossed a critical threshold, uh, like going over 100 kg, where I was like, okay, I really don't want to be, want to be there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Especially not. If it was stable, it would have been one thing. But it's like growing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go that far up. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is also uh, energy, okay. right? So I felt like, even though I was working very hard, it's very hard to recover energy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also related to how you use your body, what you put in your body, right? So I was starting to think about if I wanted to be able to survive this long term, mm -hmm. I need to do something about myself. So what what was the trigger that, you know what? I mean, need to start with my food or I need to start. I know you exercise way before we met, right? I did, but not consistently. This right? part. So... Like I would run, I uh, would go for runs um, three times in a month and then not do it for another another five months. Then, you know, after I fall off and I'll be like, oh, uh, today uh, I'll do something else. Uh, today's already late. I'm tired. Right. Uh, and it was, there was, it's always very easy to make an excuse. Okay. Now? Now I try to do it every day. Wow. On average, I get in 30 minutes of exercise. 29 to 30 days per month. So like wow. I miss it sometimes one or two and that's it. Wow, that's very um, committed. Yes, because I can only, I'm an IT person, I can only do binary. Yes or no? <laughs> I cannot do like, okay, maybe half the time I do it, half the time I don't do it. So, and that's the, that's the tricky part for me because it's very easy for me to fall off. Mm. If I give myself an excuse one time, mm. I can continue that con excuse tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, and uh, then I then I'll just fall off, right? So I have to be harsh with myself, right. 
uh, get into a routine and rhythm mm -hmm. because it's very hard for me to do on and off things. Okay. And like what you mentioned, you do have clients overseas and yes. you travel and see your client. Describe your lifestyle previously and currently. It's been like this for a while for me, mm -hmm. right? Uh, with the travel. Just that previously I was like, oh, there's one more uh, item on the long list of things that I have as an excuse to do my exercise. Mm. So, oh, yeah, tomorrow morning I have a flight at 9 a.m. No way I can exercise, right? Or, yeah, now I'm in a hotel and there's no gym, right? so what can I do? Or I, I don't have my shoes with me for running, so yeah, no way I can run, right? So these are all very convenient excuses for not having to do it. And if you have my life, every day is a great excuse right. not to do something. But that means you'll never do it. Very true. Um, I'm just going to add a bit of story here. Yeah? Mm. So I do have numbers of other clients who was also in IT. Not going to be specific which bank. So their reason not to, to exercise is because their shift. Sometimes they have to work late at night because of taking care of the security of the bank. So I was like, okay. Then I asked them, like, if you already know your shift or your schedule, why don't you try to plan something about it? Like what do you say? Previously... And currently, it's almost the same. You still travel, see your yeah. clients, like in Japan, most recent one. But previously, it was a good reason for you not to exercise because you travel. But now, irregardless, when you travel, you still find time to exercise. Yeah. Right? So I want the listener and the viewer to understand that Tim is still the same person. Yes. I did not do anything towards him. There's no, you know, a, a secret formula that make him change. Maybe... Maybe it's because he is much more aware with uh, the information that I shared with him, and he started to realize that it's not as difficult as what he thought before this. Mm. Okay. Our next question: You have successfully reduced nine point three kilos of fat while gaining two point seven kg of muscle. Amazing! Congrats. Thank you. Share with the listener and the viewer what did you change since last year november until today okay one thing that's very big is actually to have good advice right mm -hmm. and also to have a routine right so um you made a meal plan for me mm -hmm. i didn't follow it right because it's very difficult to do when you're when you're traveling mm -hmm. but what i did do mm -hmm. is look at that meal plan and say mm -hmm. okay this is the kind of food that i need so when i'm picking food outside or i'm traveling i try to match as close as possible mm. to what is on my meal plan. So let's say on the meal plan there was chicken, for example, mm. right? Chicken breast. So I try to get order a salad with a chicken breast on it, even if it's in a restaurant or at a convenience store, mm -hmm. rather than getting fried chicken, yeah. right? which is obviously not good. Right. So the the meal plan for people like me is not easy to apply, mm. uh, but I can apply what are the ingredients and what should I do. Uh, the second part is the routine. Mm. So um, I come and see you every Sunday that I'm around, right? right? And that, that helps give me routine. It also helps give me accountable because I know, oh, next week I have to go see Carmen and then <laughs> I'm going to go on the skill and it's right. going to look bad, right? So I don't want to do it. Right. Uh, it's kind of um, uh, keep it in the back of your mind kind of thing as well. Okay. But how do you adopt that new routine? Like what you mentioned earlier, previously travels, whatever you can find and eat, you eat. Mm -hmm. Now... Yes, you do not follow the meal plan at all. However, you consciously you are aware what is healthy and unhealthy. But how did you meet that as a routine? Hmm. Very good question. For the exercise, it's easier to say than for the, for the meals. But for the meals also, we all know what's not good for us. Actually, we do, right? The question is, are we actively saying, okay, I'm not accepting, like, just going along with it, right? Right. Um, one thing that I really changed is to stop saying like, oh, you know what, today I already failed, so I might as well not do it, right? I think that's a, a thing that I slip into a lot, okay. right? Today I failed, so I can eat whatever I want. And then this week, I'm already not doing all the exercises. Why do the rest of the exercises? Mm -hmm. And uh, what I've learned doing recently is to say, no, sometimes you make mistakes or you, you do things that maybe are not the best choice. Mm -hmm. But every new meal, every new day is a new opportunity mm -hmm. to do things the right way. And agree. it's much better to say, okay, I had one wrong meal and two good ones right. than to say, oh, I had one wrong meal, so might as well have three wrong, wrong ones. Right? Like that's, yeah. that's how I used to think, okay. but I kind of felt like that was 
more destructive than anything else. Right, right. Okay, I'm going to simplify yeah? so the listener can digest. If you all remember, or maybe some of you guys still practicing this, I'm going to start my diet on Monday. So you started your diet on Monday, comes Tuesday, still controlling. Wednesday, busy with meeting, and you do not follow your meal plan or your diet plan. Then you quit because you plan that from Monday until Sunday, it has to be perfect. But because you fail a day, you consider that week, it's a fail week. Team has slightly different mindset. I would say a lot of uh, different mindset that it's okay to not to follow 100%. It's okay. The most important part is try our very best to improve. I think the other day we discussed 1% change a day for 365 days, a 365% change is a huge change for you all to understand it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to eat a bit of unhealthy food here and there because you are unable to find them. But try your very best to keep the momentum or be consistent with it. Okay. So your answer regards to how you adopt a new habit is it's okay to do mistake and be consistent? Yes. So the, the habit part definitely, um, the most important thing is to understand just like you mentioned just now, like you can't do it perfectly. Right. So if that's your only criteria, it's either perfect or not, mm. you're not going to do it. Mm. So it's much better to say, oh, I get it. I got it right 80% of the time, or even 60% of the time. Yeah. That's 60% more times you did the right thing, right? Okay. So uh, the whole like on or off thing is something that's very hard to, to manage. So I'm just trying to approach every new meal avenues choice that I make as a, as a new chance to do it right. Nice. right? And then the other thing is uh, building habits, mm. right? So um, it's a mind shift, shift uh, thing I got from a book, uh, like Atomic Habits. Mm. Uh, it's a pretty famous book. But uh, basically it said like, oh, if you want to do exercise, a lot of people are focused on the outcome only. Right. So I want to lose 10 kg, right. so I want to exercise. Yeah. And then obviously once you start, number one, it's hard. Number two, it takes a while. You mm -hmm. can't see it day to day. Mm -hmm. So it's demotivating and then you don't really follow through of it because the finish line seems so far that you can't get there. Uh, and the book was like, hey, but what if you're not actually focusing on the outcome, but you're focusing on what kind of person you want to be? Mm -hmm. So for example, you could say, I'm somebody who does exercise every day mm -hmm. for my health, for my general thing. And that's your goal. And that's your, how to say, what you, how you identify your personality. Hey, Tim and I, we discussed last weekend about that. It's about the identity. If, just imagine this, you want to be like Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So for you to be like him, it's impossible if you've never done any workout before. So you have to identify, can I be like him? How is his personality? How is his lifestyle? He keeps talking about food, training, exercise, that's it. That is his identity. So the transition of you to become like him, it takes a while, it's a process, but it can be done. So I'm amazed that it took Tim less than, let me count, less than six months. He became a di different person. You know, uh, each time he come for training, he'll show, oh, um, last week I ran for how many hours? I slept for how many hours? Like he has all the data. I mean, he's in software. In the watch. Yes. Yeah, in the watch, yeah. So he shared a lot of this data that helps me at the same time. So congrats again. Now, what was your biggest obstacle during the transition and how did you overcome it? The biggest obstacle is the, the consistency, right? Especially on hard days, there's always hard days, right? Like there was one day I had a, a flight, I needed to leave the house at 5 a.m. or something. And then the rest of the day, because it was a flight to Europe, I would be on a plane. Mm. So there's no way I can exercise. Exactly. So if I want to do exercise within the 24-hour window, it has to be at 4 a.m. Like this is the only wow. time, right? Okay. So, and that, that was tough. And that's, and again, for me, it's very easy to slip, to say like, oh, once I get in there, right? What about tomorrow? What about right. tomorrow? I'm tired because of time zone difference and mm. then this and then that. So I try to really not give myself space to, mm to slip or to not do it. If I can do the right thing, I should do the right thing, right? So I tried to get up early and and just, in worst case, go for a walk, right? That's yep. also exercise, right? A brisk walk, half an hour is my minimum requirement. And on really tough days, I'm always telling myself, you can't go for a walk 
Like you can say like, okay, I'm too tired to run 5km today or whatever, right? I can make an excuse for that. Of course. But I have no excuse that I can't walk for half an hour mm. outside my house mm. and that's my deck is broken. Okay. Maybe some of the, some of you guys and listeners and viewer assume that Tim is single because he has time to exercise and focus on his work. So Tim is married. I'm very married. Very married. Yes. <laughs> and his loving wife loves to bring him out for food also. Oh yes. And they are the, they have shared a lot of healthy food with me. Imagine that like, Cam, you should try this healthy food here in Damansara 8 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So they've been exploring a lot of healthy food. That's the transition from eating good food. You should try healthier food. And how do you convince your wife that what you're doing is uh, beneficial for you and for her. I mean, it helps that we both go to you. <laughs> so she has a background on it. Right. Right. Um, but also, I think she can also see like the changes that it makes for me, right? In my energy level. And like the, the, the funny part is we sometimes we say like, oh, we don't have uh, 30 minutes. Mm. Uh, but as I mentioned at the beginning, like having 30 minutes of exercise actually helps you be uh, more sharp. Yeah. Uh, you be, you're in a better mood. Right, uh, you are up earlier. Like a lot of there's a lot of benefits actually. So, and you have 24 hours. Right, like I exercise 30 minutes per day. Mm. 30 minutes is one forty eighth exactly. of my day. It's like it's not a lot of time. Exactly. Yeah, it's like going to the shopping center to buy the ticket, a movie ticket, not to watch movie. Yeah, I, an hour. My, my 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 wife spends. Uh, on average, at least 30 minutes to get to a food place that she likes because right. she saw it somewhere and it's a little further away, right? So right. if we can drive there to eat, mm. why can't we just walk for 30 minutes, right? It's possible, not difficult. Okay, so I clearly understand regards on time management, mm. okay? But for some, it's a sensitive word because they say, but you're different, you run your own business, you can manage your time. <laughs> Am I right? That's, this is what people always tell the yes. business owner yes, because yes. we manage our time based on our work. Okay, fine, we accept that. How would you advise to those working for other people, nine to five, on to manage their time for exercise and also for eating healthy? This is for me. It's hard to explain to somebody who has a nine to five job because mm -hmm. if you've never run a business, I know you know this, right? But there are no nine to five days. Like our days are always longer than that, right? It's most certainly the case that we work more hours than if you have a standard job. It's just the nature of running a business. You mm -hmm. can't escape it. Mm. Uh, at the same time, I barely ever do any exercise during the daytime because mm. I'm also at the office. Mm. So uh, my my exercise is either in the morning or in the evening after work. And mm. those are the times that I do it as well. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, Tim, who have successfully reduced 9 kilos of fat, who travels and work, giving you an honest advice that is, whenever you are free or available, you have extra time after work, use that 30 minutes to walk around your house or maybe at a shopping center. It's not that difficult. Am I right? Yes, right. That's the, that's the minimum, right? You want to aim for uh, doing weightlifting, going to the gym, running. I try to do that a few times for me, mm. but even I can't do it every every week. As much as I really try and I, like, I have this tracker on my phone and it constantly says, hey, you haven't done your 30 minute exercise yeah. yet, right? Sometimes I can't do much more than a walk. But mm. I can always walk for 30 minutes. Like take a good brisk exactly. walk is actually very healthy. Very true. Now, your wife, um, we just measured earlier, she managed to reduce, you know, mistaken 1.8 kg of fat. Mm. Hey, congrats to her. She do have a bit of, mm, she struggle to eat as healthy as you. Am I right? We generally eat the same, the same food, I would say. Yeah, because we always eat together, right? So, okay. Like, I think she probably has a higher standard for success than I have. <laughs> right. Okay. I think for, for the food, because she's always very self-conscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the reason why I asked this question, because a moment ago, when we measure, she was just curious. She is not unhappy. She was just curious, like, 1.8 kilo only. As for you, 9 kilos. Mm -hmm. And so I told her that do not compare with Tim, because mm -hmm. according to his watch, Tim runs like 28 to 29 days a month. So, yeah. so you have extra activity compared to her. How do you comfort her? I, How do you convince her that, no, you're progressing, 
the thing is, she is progressing, right? So I don't have to comfort her. I just have to encourage, nice. right? The thing is, this is not a, we're not on a race, right? We just want to get a little bit better and healthier every day, mm. right? And, and she's doing that and I'm doing that, right? And we have slightly different uh, paces and different ways to achieve it, but it's the same thing. If you, if you keep continuously doing the right thing, mm. you arrive at the goal at whatever speed. Yes, 100% agree. Um, I'm not saying that um, Alice, the wife, is not progressing. It's just that many women out there, when they do together along with the spouse, the husband, they will compare, why is my husband losing more than me? I'm eating the same thing as him. We do the same exercise routine, but they lose more weight and fat. So one, my answer, based on current situation, Tim is much more active in terms of he will find time to walk and also jog. Number two, hormonal response. Man has higher testosterone, hence it's easier to build muscles. So Tim able to re increase, he increased 2.7 kg of muscles, which means his body demand for more energy due to gaining muscle. His wife, on the other hand, she lost muscle. I believe because of sleep, I believe because of, um, she, she said she's eating lesser. And, yeah, and she was also sick a few times. Sick a few times, yeah, yeah, because of the hot pot. <laughs> As you just mentioned just now, hot pot. So there are many reasons why women sometimes struggle to lose fat as much as their spouse. It's because of that. It's not because uh, the age. It's not because of he lose fat faster because he, he just leave weight. There's many other reasons. Okay, now, how would you advise to the listener who's going through the similar obstacle? Let's assume that they have their own business. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have their own business. They want to start losing weight and fat in a modest way, not as strict as you. Mm -hmm. How would you advise to them? Just be consistent with what you can do, right? Okay. Like, like set set up a type for yourself an identity when we talked about right? like what do you want to be? You want to be somebody who let's say regularly exercises mm -hmm. or does certain things, right? And then just just do that, right? Mm. It's much more about uh, being the person that does X, eat selfie, goes exercise, than uh, than the goal. If you want to take your time, mm. and I'm considering for myself, I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing. Yes, uh, you have to let go of the goal, right? right? I describe that. So I don't have a goal. No, it, I, I don't have like oh, I have to be this many kg uh, and this much muscle gain. I just want to be more healthy than yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And in better shape than yesterday. Yes. And I will just want to be doing the right thing, which for me, the right thing in this case is mm -hmm. uh, eat healthy, uh, exercise regularly, mm -hmm. right? And just keep doing that. And whenever something goes wrong, just go back to the default, which right. by now is eat as healthy as possible, exercise as much as often as you can. Right. Okay. I like that. And what would you advise to newly couples? that they want to start their journey. I, I'm certain that when you first started, there's a lot of debate between you and Alice. Like, we should do this, should do that. Like, like, how do you advise to the newly couple that just want to start their health and fat loss journey? Uh, one thing uh, to keep in mind is that uh, the, the biggest risk is you try to do the same thing, okay. which is almost never going to be exactly the same, mm. right? So you need to accept that both of you will likely have differences yes. in how you want to approach things. It's not going to be the same. Okay. And um, if you, if that becomes your requirement, then there's a lot of frustration and, and debate. Right? Yes. And so what you can do is set goals for yourself together in terms of, oh, we want to be more healthy and mm. exercise more. But then within that, let people do their own thing. Right. So on one hand, don't try to push your partner to do more just because you do more, right? Right, and the other way around, so, right? If you if you turn out to do less, right? Don't try to pull the other person or say like, oh, why are you do more? Right? Let people let people do their own way. Everybody has to go through their own journey, right? And for the other part, just encourage each other, mm -hmm. right? You don't like you don't force, you don't push, mm -hmm. right? You nag. You just encourage as much as possible. Okay, I'm gonna add a few things here. I'm gonna add one story first. First, many, many years ago, I have this couple, okay, husband and wife. Um, this husband came to me and asked me about training. Then 
I was assuming that he wants to train with me, but he signed up for his wife. So I was like, why do you ask for your wife when you're here? Then he, he replied that I want my wife to look even hotter. So I'm like, you know, it's not going to work because you want her to work out when she doesn't want to work out. So my advice to you all, do not force someone to exercise if they don't want. What Tim mentioned also, encourage. Forcing is not going to work when it comes to health and fitness. You fat, go exercise. It's not going to work. Instead, let us do together and be fit together. That sounds much more pleasant. Yeah. All right. So encourage instead of forcing or telling. At the same time, what Tim mentioned, um, everybody have their own preference. Alice, she prefer kickboxing. Tim prefer running. So maybe if Tim, like, let's assume if Tim tell Alice to run as frequent as him, maybe she will give up because she cannot cope up. Whereas Tim likes to run and jog. So that is his choice. So find your preference. If you don't like to run, don't run. If you like to swim, go ahead. So keep that in mind. Everybody have their own preference when it comes to health and nutrition. At the same time, if you want to progress together, encourage each other. So this is my very best advice and also Tim to you guys who are listening and viewing our video. Um, I hope in future, uh, from let's say three months from now, I'm going to re-invite Tim again. And I'm certain with his consistency and discipline, he should be able to reduce at least another six to eight kilos of fat. By then, he's an, a different person. Maybe you don't recognize him anymore. So by then, uh, Tim, again, thank you very much for coming over to the podcast. Thank you for sharing your personal experience. Thank you for having me. No worries. And see you guys again in our next episode. Take care and peace out.